Project Ledge, X1 Stage 1. My goal, a more trail capable and better handling bike, taking advantage of the front suspension, the front and the rear, and doing so at a budget of around $200. And money well spent because let me tell you, major, major change. It's like the bike woke up and decided it actually can handle trails. But I'm going to lead off here with something I actually didn't change, which is the drivetrain. It's ProRush powered, and we know ProRush is usable, not perfect, but usable. However, the more I've ridden this, the more that I do notice that it is a full suspension bike and that I do need a bit more gearing. Because full suspension and hills, even with my new suspension parts, it still robs a bit of power. And I know this is a curious start to a project video where I'm talking about a couple of negatives to lead off, but I'm setting the stage for just how much the experience is better because it's so much smoother with a decently equipped full suspension bike. Up front, no more noises. As a matter of fact, the only thing I can hear now is chain slap. And at the back, it's amazing just how much shock you can get for $49. So let me show you what I ended up with. Let me set the stage with my goals. Budget, $200-ish. dollars. I wanted to try to stick at $200, but I went a little over. The demands, a better suspension. Front and rear, more adjustment. Front and rear. But also keeping what I need to keep, what works well enough. Where did I start? With a new headset. Now I did add an upper and that pushed me over the $200 mark. I could have skipped that and just went with a lower, but stage two was coming, so I just went ahead and pressed them both in at the same time. So new upper and lower, the lower is ZS5640, so I could fit the new tapered fork. Ultra budget, this is a bucklow. So I paid $112 for this fork. It's an air fork. It features a manual lockout and it fits the bill. Being made for 27.5 inch wheels and I wanted 120 millimeters of travel. And I know it says 100 here on the stanchions, but I measured the grease marks and I'm getting a full 120. For stage one, this will meet the needs and it also meets my rebound adjustment requirement. It also lets me use the quick release factory wheels. Remember these have those big 2.60 tires. I was a bit worried that there wasn't gonna be enough spacing with this fork, but it turns out it's just fine. Another benefit, it sheds weight. Being 4.2 pounds versus the 7.4 of the factory element, that's gonna get the weight down to 37 pounds for stage one. And I'm hoping that in stage two, I can ditch these hubs my goal for stage two, 32 pounds. For now though, I'm keeping the hubs and some other weighty parts like the ProRush drivetrain, which is okay enough that it meets my budget and performance needs at this moment, at least for stage one. Not all of the drivetrain stayed though, because the pedals, I had to get rid of those factory slip and slides. So I reached for Fookers, the cheapest, best $22 pedals that I could find. I know the color doesn't match, but I know Fookers work, so I was more concerned with function than matching color. Being able to stay on the pedals over bumps is key. Now let's look at the new rear suspension shock, because $49 got me this, a DNM DV22 AR. I've used DNM multiple times in the past with great success, but never this coil type. I am overwhelmed with just how much performance there is here for this budget, this low budget. It gives me an adjustable range for the spring and a rebound adjustment that actually works. Money well spent, size 165 millimeter, eye to eye, a perfect match for the old factory coil spring. I was even able to use the original hardware. The shock itself has 35 millimeters of travel. The effective travel range of the entire suspension system, I haven't measured yet. But there is a nice bit of movement to the pivot system. And talking about the pivot system, I've seen comments that it's all plastic. Plastic washers and spacers. First, metal bolt, metal washer. And I figured maybe you would probably want to see this. How about bearings? Nice to see. Unlike those cracks in the frame. Now I'm kidding, and with all due respect, I've had many eagle-eyed viewers comment about cracks in the frames. And with all due respect, I appreciate the close observations, but let me show you what this actually is. No cracks, just the shadow from the casting ridges. I've been calling this slag, but the proper term is casting flash. I think I just like saying the word slag. But there you go, no cracks. So for stage one, the new air fork with 120 millimeters of travel, the new rear shock, which is adjustable and makes cool hissing sounds when it compresses, and I think even looks impressive. And you got to see the pivot bearings, which match the bearings in the new pedals. And I don't know if you've noticed yet, but there are fewer graphics. I ditched everything but the mongoose branding. So I got rid of most of the factory graphics, but I added one of my own, a boo-boo. Yeah, unfortunate. 
but I now have a spot for a Kev Central sticker, which are, by the way, for sale on my eBay store, a link down in the description, as well as a link for all the parts I used on this build. So what do you think? Counting the cost of the bike, I've got $622 worth of stuff here. It would be under $600 if I wouldn't have used the upper headset and used something like maybe Rock Bros pedals. From my perspective, for an ultra budget build, this is pretty good. Now it's not knocking it out of the park good, but it is knocking it over good. Seriously though, I'm very happy with this. For a $200-ish build, the gain is more than I could have hoped for, given that small budget, and shows just how close the Ledge X1 is to being a trail-capable bike out of the box, and how little it takes to make it trail-capable. As good as this was, given all the factors and the parts used, Stage 1 is no more. It's now stripped down and ready for refit as Stage 2, where I expect great things. So stay tuned and you'll want to make sure that you are subscribed and you have that notification bell active so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching Kev Central and have a great day.